Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many more. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening random heathen ramblings podcast enjoy and hail to you all hail everybody hail and welcome back indeed getting close to the end of season three here on the random heathen ramblings podcast brought to you by um me midgard musings of course and all of you because obviously this podcast wouldn't be um a podcast if we didn't have listeners viewers and supporters, which speaking of supporters, I do want to give a very special shout out to the very first podcast supporter through the Anchor platform. Um, if you guys are listening on Spotify, you know that this podcast is brought to you by the lovely folks at Anchor. And um, I want to give a special shout out to my first podcast supporter through that platform. So thank you to Rob Langston, who has um, who has started a uh, monthly support of the podcast. If you guys are looking to do that as well, you go to the anchor.fm uh, platform or you can download the Anchor app on your mobile device and go find the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. And through there, you'll find options to um, support me um, monetarily. You can also do that through any um, of the uh, number of other ways uh, that is going to be uh, annotated in the link tree link that you can find at the or in the show notes and, and uh, description of every podcast. So um, thank you, Rob. And thank you to all my supporters. Special thank you also to my patrons. I know I've been a bit remiss recently in getting uh, my patrons shouted out. Um, there's not a lot right now, but I am hoping to bring back the, uh, not hoping to, I am um, bringing back the uh, monthly rune readings, but I'm doing it in a little bit of a different way. So I know I have um, Janet King, um, and one other, I'm, I'm blanking on the name right now, but to my two patrons on Patreon that um, get the monthly rune draws uh, every month, you're going to be getting a little bit of a different format um, going forward. So instead of the you know email that I send you with uh, you know your monthly rune draw, you're going to be getting something a little bit different. It's still going to be in the form of an email, but it's going to be a little bit different. So I'm just still you know working out the scheduling of all that. Um, it is the beginning of October, which means you will be receiving your um podcast or not sorry your uh your runes your rune readings um here soon because i'm going to try to do that at the beginning of each month for the month ahead um so there's a little bit of an update for you on that um as far as everything else goes yes we are in the month of october it is finally feeling like such um the, the temperatures have been very pleasant very mild very cool in the evenings even cool during the day um and i'm loving it it's been long overdue um Winter nights is is coming up for us here in Middle Tennessee, where at least our tribe, the uh, Thurbidi folk, very small right now, but we are going to be doing our inner tribal celebrations of winter nights coming up this coming weekend. So in just a couple of days time, uh, we will start that celebration. It is going to be just a one night uh, thing with the tribe, but traditionally speaking, winter nights was, I think, observed as a three day or three night long um, celebration, much like the rest of the uh, historically accurate traditional uh, holy tides. You know, you have Yule, uh, Sigurd Bloat, or the Victory Bloat, and then Winter Nights. Uh, so we have Winter Nights coming up this weekend, um, leading into the full moon cycle. And then 
the weekend after that, we'll be um, camping out with the folks at uh, Brave and Moon Hearth for their Shadow Mood event. So lots of fun and, and exciting uh, pagan events coming up here this month. Um, but today's podcast is going to be, I'm going to be joined here shortly, this time for real, um, with a new guest who um, I, I came into knowledge of uh, through actually my wife. And although my wife isn't um, Norse pagan, uh, she does entertain uh, and, and explore a bit more of like a, I don't know, maybe eclectic witch, witchy type stuff is, is the right um it's no real label to what she kind of does it's all you know very just free form and how whatever feels right for her, which is which is important uh but she certainly supports what i do here and uh she's um she's on tiktok um and she was i guess just scrolling through the the feeds of tiktok i don't obviously have one so i don't know how the platform usually works but we're going to have a a guest on today who is a pagan um, I guess I call them TikTokers. Yeah. You know, so um, this guy has quite a, a large audience or a large following. Um, he is known on the platform um, as the Bearded Viking or I think it's Bearded Viking 7. His social media, his uh, uh, reach, I think, includes also Instagram and YouTube. So he will be um, jumping onto the podcast today to talk about kind of like the presence of pagans on social media and whatever else we can ramble on about um, for a bit. So um, if you want to find uh, him on his various platforms, just check out uh, the description and check out the show notes if you're just listening for Bearded Viking on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, so without further ado, let's welcome in, his name is David, David Christensen, um, or also known as Bearded Viking. Yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, back on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I've got with me um, the bearded Viking, David Hello. Christensen. <laughs> How are you, man? All right, good. I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm excited to have you on here. Um, we were talking a little bit offline about some stuff that I think will have a really good uh, content laid out for, for the listeners and for the viewers today. Um, but uh, for for those that maybe don't recognize your face. I mean, you have a pretty large audience on, um, on, on TikTok we were talking about uh, earlier, but um, go ahead and, and just introduce yourself to, to everybody listening and watching, please. So, uh, hello everybody. <laughs> My name is uh, David Christensen. I go by Bearded Viking 7 on TikTok or The Bearded Viking on Instagram, but uh, I'm an online content creator. That's my full time. And I teach about um, my pagan journey uh, I do some funny Viking content, and uh, I also do my best to be as interactive with the Norse or pagan or Viking or whatever you want to call it community, um, just to help spread positivity, love, and create drama-free environments for everybody. That's my big goal, and that's kind of what I do. So, mm. and um, on on the respective platforms, you've uh, and I don't, I was telling everybody before you got on here, I, I have like an intro and everybody listened and heard that I don't use TikTok. My wife does. And that's actually how we came into this whole thing happening is, is she was scrolling through the feeds, came across, I don't know if it was like a live yeah. or something yeah. that you were doing there. Yeah. And uh, reached out and was like, Hey, you know, my husband does this podcast. Would you ever be interested? And, and then now lo and behold, here we are. Yeah. Right. It happened pretty quick, actually. <laughs> yeah. Relatively quickly, you know, um, and I appreciate the, the, the interest and the response, but your, uh, your audience on TikTok, I mean, I think when last I checked, you were in the thousands or hundreds, tens of thousands of what, what's your following like on TikTok and right now, right now I'm a little over 600,000. Yeah. I, yeah. Feel, I, I feel like it should be the other way around. I feel like I should be on your podcast because <laughs> I'm over here. Like I've got, you know, about four and a half K on YouTube. I've got, I don't know, weekly regular listeners on, on all my podcast platforms. And, you know, we're talking like maybe in the hundreds, but that's consistent, you know, and it's, it's such a funny thing now with like being on social media and, and using the platforms that we have available to us to kind of work for us, you know, like, and putting them to work, you get really, I don't know how you are, but I get really deep in the numbers and the analytics. Is that something that you get tied up yeah. in too much? So, so, so uh, when I first grew up until I hit about 200,000, I was really focused on analytics and numbers. Um, now it's 
it's kind of very consistent now to where it kind of runs itself. Mm. So I don't look at those as much as I used to. Uh, I'm more focused on the qual like the quality of the content I'm putting out. But back then it used to be about how can I get more views and how can more people see mm. what I'm putting out there. But now it's one post a day. Back then it was four posts a day, you know? Mm. So it's, it's kind of changed dramatically over time, but right. I, I've definitely harped on the analytics before for about a year. Yeah. I want to get back to that um, here in a little while because um, you, you know, you talk about uh, the, the, the number that, you know, the actual quantity of content, yeah. whereas now it's more of the quality of content. Yeah. But before we get into all that, I do want to come back to it. Um, and I, what I do want to uh, maybe pick your brain about a little bit is what, what brought you to social media to like with your paganism? Cause I'm assuming, and you, if you're willing to um, expound a little bit on it, you were a pagan before you were a content creator, at least in this vein as, as a pagan content creator, right? Actually very funny is my, my page, my TikTok started when my pagan journey started. So okay. I was, uh, me personally, and again, all love to them, but I was Christian right before I started my uh, my main TikTok that I am now. But uh, I had read the book, The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And um, with that and a little help from, you know, other things, uh, I kind of just one day just clicked. My whole, my whole mind changed and I started looking at the world differently. And I started and then I looked into my heritage. My dad always told us we were heavily Norwegian. My grandparents built boats. And like way, and I had no idea. And my dad's like, "Yeah, we're heavily Norwegian." So I looked deeper into it, and I was like, "Wow, this is my belief system. This is what I. This is how I feel. I feel morally like this is the path I'm guided towards." Mm. And uh, I just started diving deeper into it. And if you look through my TikTok way back, you don't have to. There's thousands of videos. But <laughs> if you go back, you can literally see from the beginning of what I was learning how to say the word nomir. Mm. <laughs> literally from there, you know, it's pretty. Wow. So yeah. uh, if, if we were to put a timeline on things, um, how long have you been pagan? Almost two years now. Almost wow. two years. Wow. Yeah. So you've been you've been putting a lot of work into building uh and if and if and this is not a slight, but like building the brand or building a brand, you know. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's the that's the right term. But yeah, not, yeah, I know what you mean by that. Yeah. Cause I've been the same way, right? Like I was actually I actually was pagan for years before I came up with the idea of putting it out on social media, you know, like, because again, same, same with you. And I think same with a lot of us, um, a lot of folks that, that follow what I do and probably follow what you do as well. The, the background of Christianity um, yeah. is, is, is rampant, right? Like that's a lot of what, especially if like, are you a native to the South? I think you're in, and you know, you're, you're, I mean, you're a. Oh, but I was born and raised in New Jersey. So I'm East coast. I'm from New York, man. Oh, there you go. So, <laughs> so yeah, we're transplants, right? Like we're, you know, we're, we're in a, in a, in a strange strangers in a new land or whatever. But, um, I've been in the South, I've been in Tennessee for going on 20 years now, almost Wow. about 15, about, about 16 years. Yeah. And, um, but raised, raised, you know, in a non-denominational, non-denominational, uh, Christian, uh, values, worldviews and stuff. So when I, you know, left that i was in tennessee at the time you know i wasn't in new york with my, where all my family still lives um but the change from that into this particular offshoot of, of of paganism right because there's you know paganism of all kinds in all different cultures but norse or germanic paganism carries with it and i don't you know if you've picked up on this yet because I think when I was like two or three years into my journey, I still hadn't quite picked up on like the worldview or worldviews. There's yeah. the, it's, it's, it's vastly different. There's some similarities, but there's, there's, you know, certain things about Germanic heathenry specifically or Germanic paganism as heathenry, as we call it, that are, that are not the same as what you would find in uh, a Christian universal kind of worldview, you know, there's certain terms, certain, you know, how the world is viewed, just, you know, that. So my, my, you know, uh, social media was um, pushed into to paganism years after I had kind of started this pagan path of mine. And then, and then along the way, it's become a, almost like a, a journal, like a, 
digital or virtual journal of, of the journey. So great. That's awesome. Cause down the road, you're going to look back at it and be like, man, that was so cool that I did that. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Do, do you, uh, do you like, so since you are kind of, and, and again, no disrespect, but like you're a newbie, you're, you're young in the, in the path, like two years is, is like, you're still learning to walk a bit. Um, when you look back at your content that you started your, your social media platforms with on, on paganism stuff, you're talking about like pronouncing the word Mjolnir or some of these other things, like, do you see, like, do you look back and sometimes go, ah, you know, like you almost cringe a little bit at yourself, like not in a bad way, but like, cause I do, I see my own stuff. I'm like, man, I need to revisit that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when, when it comes to at least the information I released from yeah. the video, I filmed them cringy. Totally. Definitely. Oh, but, but I was always very particular on um, being educated before I said anything. Uh, I like, I don't like saying anything I don't know. I don't like saying anything I haven't researched. Uh, it's just something uh, that I do because when people ask and I have no idea what I'm talking about, like that's, yeah. that's that image all around, not good morally for me, at least. I like to be a man of my word, you know, which is part of our, our values. I, I believe in paganism. You know, our word means a lot. Um, so sure. I, I really fully live within that. So when I look back, the information I released, uh, I still I still really do hold on to that. But obviously the way it was transmute, transmuted, wrong mm. word, right? Whatever the right word is. The way it was projected, there you go. Could have been better. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. I, uh, and I wonder too, like how much we... Uh, like not necessarily that the information was wrong or incorrect, but how much we've learned in our respective journeys along the way that can kind of expound upon it because we learned things that we didn't know back then. So it's not like necessarily it was it was wrong or incorrect. It's like, wow, there's actually there's other layers of the onion that we're peeling it back. Yep, it's all an onion. <laughs> and, and, and discovering along the way, you know. Yep. Um, so what brought you to paganism? I mean, obviously your heritage, you know, you said things clicked. Um, was it just that, or was there anything profound that you can think of in your mind that like stood out to you? It was like, yeah, this is, this is the direction I want to head in. So, so I, I'm pretty open about it. And I actually, I meditated on the thought for it a little bit, uh, a couple of years back. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but, um, I, I dove into a psychedelic realm and, oh uh, man. That, that's a whole other podcast, man. We can talk about that. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> a bunch of uh, mind change. Like, again, the untethered soul is the one that really opened up that that uh, that mindset for me to start, like, looking into paganism. And um, after I read that book, uh, at the time, I was, you know, in a good mood. And uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. literally the first chapter, I remember I listen. I'm an auditory reader. I need to listen to the books. I can't sit there and read it. Um, the first chapter, I literally sat down and had to rethink my whole life. Wow. You know, when I had that realization, I, I went home and within six months, I was, uh, I do this now, you know, in six months, my whole life flipped. I dug pools in Arizona, <laughs> you know, so worst job ever. And then in six months later, I was able to quit and do this full time. I, uh, D not to put not to like de de detract from what you're saying but when you say pools in arizona i gotta i gotta assume that that's a pretty sustainable source of work out there is as hot as, i mean almost everybody must have a pool or at least someone nearby so it's probably a pretty at least reliable <laughs> yep. form of work yeah there was actually a law you couldn't work outside outside uh if it was 115 degrees or more and that happened a lot you and i are both from the north right the Northeast. I, 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 for all intents and purposes, when I say I'm a Northman, I mean that in the literal sense. You know what I mean? I'm not just being like, oh, because I follow Germanic paganism, I'm a Norseman. Like, no, bitch, I'm actually from the North. Like, I grew up in New York where it would snow, you know, six feet a year and, and, and stuff like that. Going into like the South here in Tennessee, dude, like, and you were in Arizona and you're, you're in like a Southern state now, I believe. What a, what a, what a, Oh man, I I mean, like it's not like I hate being here, but man, the summer months, I I I, I tell people one time, like, well, if you want to know what the seasons are like in the south, it's summer and not summer. <laughs> yeah, <definitely> not. <laughs> yeah. It's it's you know, you don't really get a true winter. I mean, yeah, you might get like a couple of weeks or maybe a month total of like bitter, bitter cold where it, you know, you get snow and ice. But no, that's <laughs> that that's like that's like Thanksgiving morning. 
you know? I totally prefer the snow out here. So me personally, I know, I know I prefer the snow because I sweat like crazy. <laughs> Same. This, over 80 degrees. I'm like, man, I need to yep. be wearing and shorts. And I don't like shorts. <laughs> so, yep. but um, in snowy areas, again, I love Maine. I've been to Maine when it snows, Jersey, New York, Massachusetts. I love Michigan, Minnesota. I yeah. love, love the snow. <laughs> yeah. But I, all four seasons, you know. But out here, I'm in Texas right now. Out here, it's all summer. <laughs> yep. Which part of Texas, if you don't care me asking? Yeah. San Antonio. Okay. I know some people in uh, the East Texas area, like Tyler. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, I, I it's not like not a sponsor, right? But the Ravens call um, Eric Shervin. If you uh, anybody that's followed me for any length of time knows that I speak very highly of Eric, um, but he is he is um, he is the chieftain and Gothi of the Hridgar folk or Hridgari in East Texas. So Tyler, you know that area, and um, they have regular like public meetups and and stuff. And I want to say there that there's people that have ventured out for some of his meetups, even as far away as like the Dallas Fort Worth area, which is, I think an hour and a half or so's drive from, from him. But um, I was, I was asked, I was asked, like my wife was like, well, maybe he knows Eric. I'm like, Texas is a big state. I don't know. Maybe he's heard of him on YouTube, but and he's also on TikTok. He's, he's got a TikTok too. Because uh, I don't have you heard of House Vikinga, my uh, my Discord community. I think I've 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 heard of it because of some of the content that I've like breezed through on 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 the various platforms that I can catch it on. So I, I don't have a TikTok, but I'll like go through and I'll like educate yeah. myself a little bit because I don't want to bring a schmuck on here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh, David seems like a pretty cool guy. It's it's you know thumbs up for me. You know I don't. Fortunately, yeah. this podcast is small enough where I don't have to go through a a committee. To determine yeah. guests or whatever it's hey what do i want on my podcast right so it works out but yeah i've heard of it yeah the yeah. discord thing yeah on there we have a lot of like clans and kindreds that come through uh, i created it as like a hub for norse paganism or just paganism in general for people to come in and meet others and uh there's a lot of clans kindreds and communities that come in there and just like talk and commute and i feel like i've heard of that uh you said they're a clan right yeah, and so the they're they're very tribal in their approach, and and it's uh, the Hridgar folk or Hridgar Hridgari, right? People of Hridgar um, is it's it they're they're a tribal heathen group, you know. So, um, as much as you've maybe learned or, or or seen, you know, the collective of people in the community, right? You've got your large community, and you have like smaller cells. Or, or, or group. Some of them will be called kindreds. Some of them will call themselves tribes. Some of them may call themselves clan. I have yeah. a pretty like specific view in, in terms of like the terminology, but it's semantics at that point. I mean, you can call it whatever the heck you want, I guess, but yeah, they are a, a small tribe, smallish cool. tribe of, of, of people out there in East Texas. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I feel like I've heard of them. I just don't know anything about about it <laughs> yeah so if you guys you know uh youtube david but like anybody listening watching the ravens call on youtube um right. and i want to say that he's it's probably the ravens call I'll, I'll i'll make sure that you got his because he's on tiktok too he's actually starting to really use that platform to um share his stuff because and this kind of maybe like segues back yeah. into and we'll bounce around a little bit if that's okay but like in terms of like the the quality over quantity thing have you noticed that content in general for like influencers social media uh, content creators have you noticed that um digest like the, the way that content is being digested and absorbed now is so it's it's short like it, it, it if you're not engaging with people with like a minute long clip so like you got your tiktoks you got youtube re uh shorts you got facebook reels instagram reels it's almost like you're not staying relevant anymore. Have you noticed that? 100%. In fact, if you don't capture them, so there's been an, like a, a study done. So I, I do a lot of research on the algorithm and stuff like that. And I see how oh. people, I, I'm starting to find out how it's working again. It changes all the time. But if you don't catch them, catch them within the first seven seconds and they will hop off, TikTok penalizes your video. Seven wow. seconds. Seven. Wow. So Look at my recent videos. If you if you checked it out, every between five and seven to eight seconds, I have a, a new clip. 
even if it's me on the same sentence. It's just, uh, hey guys, I'm doing well. Oh, so you I'm, trim it? Yeah, you like you splice the the content to. There's a clip, and and when it does that, it reengages people's attention span. So, yeah. So I've been getting people to watch one minute videos instead of struggling to get them to watch a 15 second video. You know. So like you're saying, like the, the algorithm actually figures out when your video is is split like that versus uh, no. like if you were to just run like a minute long thing where you just like hold in your phone, talking, whatever your content is like a minute long and that's a minute long. Yep. The spliced yep. sections of the video are Better. recognized by the algorithm to be like, that's what we want. To, that's what we want. So the algorithm will recognize that people are watching it more. Wow. It Make it past that seven seconds, which if you can put two four second clips together that, that catch attention, you'll, you'll improve your chances of getting more views and the algorithm will push the video. But if you drag it out too long, the algorithm docks your video and you're less likely to gain, to gain traction. Wow. Yeah. It's so this crazy. Is, it, it is crazy. And it's interesting because I've made jokes here on, at times because I'm always like, you know, I mean, you're, you're a content creator, dude. Like you understand, like when, when you engage with people, you, you give them verbal nods or prompts, right? Hey, like for more, subscribe, um, this sort of thing, right? Great. I always, I, I refer to that as appeasing the algorithm gods, you know, stuff yeah. like that where engage with us, right? Leave a comment, leave a like, share it around, you know, be engaging. Don't just be like, sit here and make yourself known right and 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 it's almost like a an, it, it's an active part of this whole thing and for me it and again i'm not trying to make something out of nothing here but it's almost like how as a, as a pagan you have to be active it's not yeah. just going to church um listening to what somebody else says going home and feeling good about yourself to get something out of this path this folkway this religion whatever is work is required. You have to be engaging. You have to do hail the you. doers, right? Yes. You, you need to do it. You know, it's not just given to you, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of things where it's like, Oh, you say this prayer and you're forgiven, you know, and I'm not just talking about, you know, Christianity, but it's just like at the, and in this, what I really like about it is if you want something out of it, you need to find it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just like, Oh, pray, you know, which, which yeah. and no, no hate on anything. I'm just using it as an example. But it's just like, oh, sure. this is much deeper and much more inward than it is external, you know? Well, and it goes back to like some of the worldview stuff that I was talking about, because prayer, um, and I don't know if you've yet discovered this within heathenry specifically, but prayer is absolutely part of this religion. And I use the term religion because it's an accurate depiction for me, at least, of what we're doing here. The way that I kind of see things is that as heathens, you know, pagans, whatever term you want to put to it, yeah. we, we, we share existence with other beings around us. So and there are the whites, there are the Vaitir, um, there are, there's life all in and around us. And that, that, that is spiritual. That is our spirituality, how we engage with our ancestors, the whites around us, the land, the home, etc. right? That touches on the spirituality of this path. When we talk about connecting to the divine, the sacred, the gods and goddesses, that to yeah. me touches on religion, the religious aspects of it, the ceremonial, the ritual. Uh, exactly. And prayer is definitely a part of it, but it means something different in a heathen context than it does in Christianity, right? Like there's there's layers to prayer. There's layers to it. It's not just lip service. You know, it's it's an invocation, an evocation, a yep. uh, 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 a kind of like a declaration of intent almost along the way like it's it's there's layers to it all today did you but, did you have to watch that because it's about prayer in paganism which one uh i literally just posted it like a couple hours ago but it's just about what prayer is in paganism it's about intention it's about you know sitting medit meditations more like the prayer you know it's kind of sitting inward and listening and it's it's less asking because mm. Uh, well, one thing, at least with me personally, is I, I found that it's if you if you ask with the intention of doing what's necessary, not just like, hey, give me, give me. It's, hey, like, I need some strength to get through this. Got me with some wisdom, you know, or give me the path to earn the wisdom to make this happen. You know, or it's it's 
said differently than in prayer. Like when I was Christian, I'd be like, Hey, you know, like, I really need help here. Uh, like, please help me through this, you know, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. And now it's like, Hey, like help me find the inner strength, you know, mm -hmm. but let's make this happen. You know, my intention is to move forward. And I, I, I ask upon your guidance, you know, or so, something like that, you know, it, it really all just kind of depends on how I'm feeling at the moment, but it's been less of asking and more of like intention setting, I mm -hmm. guess. That well, yeah. And I guess I'm going to, I'm going to uh, pose a question for you just to kind of make it, make it an interesting engagement here. Um, when you when 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 we pray or or when prayer is is delivered as like in a heathen context, you're talking about it's not so much give me give me give me, it's 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 retrospective. You know there there's there's intent, there's focus, and all that, right? Where do you sit on the doing of things to get something? And I and I mean this specifically in the context of reciprocity. Man, okay, so I'm gonna start off very funny. Reciprocity. Can you dumbify that for me a little bit? <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. So the to give a gift, you must to to receive a gift, you must give a gift. The gifting exchange, the reciprocal exchange of gifts to like receive. offering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so my, my offering typically tends to be like um, I, I use incense, but I use different types of incense for different uh, for different intentions i guess you'd say it's like if i'm say depressed you know if we, we we all feel this like i don't like saying i'm depressed but we feel the depression you know mm -hmm. it can put us and it's like i, I want to feel that weight lifter off you know i'll use an earth and earth incense you know and i'll kind of just set the intention to release to 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 be to uh feel it kind of come off of my chest mm -hmm. and what I do in that is I sit with the incense in front of me. I have my altar, which is actually up here. I see it here. Lovely. But I sit here, I let the incense flow, and I just meditate on the feeling of release. And typically, I tend to feel like they, it, or it, whatever, again, whatever you want to call the deities or entities or gods, um, typically, I'll feel something breathe or like a light like a weight just comes off of me but almost in like a breeze even if i'm in a room with no breeze you know it's the weirdest thing i'll get chills mm -hmm. and then if i open my eyes after that meditation or that intention the world seems brighter things mm -hmm. feel i feel happier i feel like things just start falling into place and once i started incorporating that actually with my intention on social media uh like i said within six months my whole life switched just the second I started integrating meditation and, you know, prayer, uh, whatever terminology you want to use for it. Yeah. Uh, they set those intentions and I started making it like a part of my life. I, I really noticed my life actually changed, you know, that if, yeah. like living in it and hoping something changed, you know what I mean? It really felt, felt real. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, yeah no, I, I do. And I, I think that, you know, so I've had different people on this podcast talking about, you know, the the approach to to heathenry and stuff. And I and I for a long time uh, for for any of the OGs of, of Midgard musings, you know, like I would always preface my video saying that um, I am not what I would refer to, at least as a hardcore reconstructionist heathen. And yeah. I think that there's a lot of value and there's a lot of importance to understanding the documented historical uh, sources and things that we know for a fact were more than just the conjecture or um, you for are you familiar with the term UPG unverified personal gnosis have you heard that term first uh, so I, I've not heard that term but I'm familiar okay. with so so you'll you're 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 gonna obviously obviously you came across it now but you're gonna if you continue down this path you're gonna come across the term especially as a content creator like you're gonna you're gonna hear the term upg and that's essentially just your feelings your personal experiences that are unverified that are not rooted or based on any sort of concrete historical archaeological evidence right yes so I'm not what I would necessarily refer to as a hardcore reconstructionist, but I'm also not someone who is just all fluffy bunny, willy nilly, 
dancing in the meadows, you know, just feeling my way through life. Like I've got a foundation and I've got a root, which does have a lot of focus on the historical side of things. Yeah. Um, but I'm not like so rooted in the past and I'm not so root bound that I can't grow. And that's where I think there's a, there's a, there's a very important line to follow is that you need to have a foundation. You need to know where your roots are. You need to nurture those roots yeah. and allow for new growth because, and I've said this before that tradition, right? So people, so many people get stuck on the fact that, well, you don't do it. You're not supposed to do it that way, man, because that's not how it's done traditionally. Well, what is tradition, right? Tradition was at one point in time, somebody's unverified personal gnosis. It was their UPG. They're like, I think this is going to work. And then next thing you know, five, 10, 15 people thought, Hey, you know, that's, Bjorn that's, over here is yeah. doing it. I want to do it like Bjorn. And then it it's what it becomes tradition, right? So we build new traditions. Tradition is the preservation of fire. It's not the worship of ashes. Yes. Ah, I like that. That's cool. I like that one. <laughs> you know, so when, when you talk about like, when I was asking you about like the whole like reciprocity, the giving, the understanding that you have of, I have to give something in order to receive something. I can't just be like, Hey man, I need help over here. What are you going to do for me? Without yes. first being like, I am giving something of myself. I'm giving something of value. There, there is an exchange. I'm there's a gift cycle that takes place. And we see this incur occurring in nature, right? In the natural world, you know, there, there is, there is a give and a take. There's this cycle that, that continuously happens. We, we see it across many cultures. It's just, it's, it's, it's a natural intrinsic thing in, in, in the universe i feel yeah and yeah. so when we when we when we realize that when we tap into that is that when we when we pray what our prayers is are not just you know lip service it's not just asking for a favor it's i need something here's my gift to you in hopes of receiving a gift in return and when we tap into that like you say when we when we realize that things change yeah. things changed for you you know and in your mind it was you know the incense, the meditation or whatever. Now, you know, people are probably going to come across this and be like, well, that's not necessarily the way that the ancient pagans did it in German, you know, ancient Germanic times or whatever. Like, well, yeah, who gives a shit? I'm not gonna it's go how we it. do it now. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> it, it's, it's fine. You know, like that's, that's, that's cool. Like you can go back to those sources. You can go back to those ways and, and definitely feel a connection. Like, I mean, oh, if, yeah. if, if, if you look at like some of the, um, I'll just, you know, off the top of my head, like if you, if you were to observe holy tides, like Yule, for yep. instance, based right. off of the historical recounting of it, when it was done, how it was done, you're, you're probably going to feel something different than if you were to, let's say, follow it up based off of a more modern 12 day night celebration that, that kind of reflects more of like the Wiccan wheel of the year. Not to say that there's anything wrong with that, because if it works, it works. And I and I always say, you know, do what works for you. If it's if it works for you and you and yours, then nobody else can tell you differently. See, that's that's exactly how I feel. Uh, so I I consider myself, at least me personally, I consider myself more eclectic. So yeah, yeah but yeah. So I kind of I, I piece together a lot of things from everywhere. Uh, again, I'm still like you said, newborn. You know, I'm two years in. I'm still finding practices and finding things that work for me. And, and what I do is I don't restrict myself to one, you know? So, so I, I consider myself eclectic because I'll look into Buddhism, you know, and I'll mm -hmm. look at Hinduism and just kind of just like, look at the way they do things, the way they think, the way it acts. And I'll just kind of be like, huh, I wonder if that changes anything, mm -hmm. not the whole religion, but that little thing they do, you know, like the way Buddhists meditate with their breathing techniques, mm -hmm. you know? I incorporate that into my meditations. Sun gazing is very much like a new age thing. You know, I try that, you know, just to see if it works because I want to, I, I, I believe a practice, a practice that works is the practice for you. Yes. So yeah. that, that for myself more eclectic than I would say like Norse pagan or heathen, you know, people would call me heathen. I don't mind that at all, but uh, I, I'm still piecing together my spiritual journey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, and you definitely um, have a, I mean, when, when, when you talk about like branding and stuff, when, when you, when you put yourself on out, out on, on a social media platform with a moniker, like, you know, bearded Viking, 
and 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 have the look that you have and and you don't you know Mjolnir on your branded uh you know yeah. clothing and and all that like it, it 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 definitely attracts a specific audience i think it it definitely yeah and i and i've run across people in our pagan communities around here that are eclectic in that way but they they adopt certain norse or germanic things like the runes being one of them specifically like the rune runic divination is such a big and has been i think for so long a big Which I- I do practice that. I'm still learning. <laughs> There's still a lot of runes that I'm I'm learning about, but I do practice runes and you know divination and reading. Uh, I I'm just still practicing learning to read them. You know that's just yeah. to be honest. But it, uh, I, I I dive heavily into my my heritage size. That's why Norse paganism attracts me so much, or heathenry, whatever whatever yeah. the term. I don't want to say it wrong, but it it attracts me a lot because it's my roots. It's where I'm from. It's who I am. Uh, so mm-hmm. I dive deep into it and I have heavy respects for it and I do practice I do practice it and I find what works for me uh but I also am huge on somebody who I I'm really bad in a world where it's hard to identify I'm hard to identify my belief system you know it's just yeah I really I'm too young I think to really subscribe to exactly one thing I want to keep trying things but I'm definitely you're yeah. in that you're in the discovery stages and that's and that's what it is it's all about discovering and learning and you and you're not limiting yourself and you know to each their own right everybody finds yeah there's no uh, right or wrong. it's just do it your way you know whatever yeah. works if you follow Eric Shervin, the Ravens call, you're going to hear him and he's got like I said um a, a wonderful catalog of YouTube videos he one one of the things that he's known for for saying um and he's like like tried to hashtag this, but it's not my haul, not my call. That's cool. Doesn't work for me. Then if it works for you, then I and nobody else is in any position to try and tell you or them otherwise, you know? Exactly. Um, Reciprocate both ends. Yeah. Just and I, ends. and I, and I like, I like the fact that you explore, uh, like Eastern philosophy and, and other, like you say, Buddhism. Cause I, I think it was a YouTube video of yours. Um, because you do have a YouTube channel. Yeah, right? yeah. Viking 7. <laughs> so uh, <plug. laughs> Yep, yep. And all of this is going to be, like I said at the beginning, guys, uh, check the description and show notes of the podcast because all of all of David's stuff is going to be annotated and linked down there. So follow, like, subscribe, you know the bit. But I remember, I think it was a video you did. Uh, it might have been this year. It might have been last year. But you were talking about grounding. Yes. Yeah, that was a couple months ago. Yeah. I love that video because I've more recently... You know, and I've been pagan now for going into seven years that I've classified myself as pagan. You know, like there's there's parts of my life that I look back on. I'm like, well, it's always been there. Like I've always done things that were kind of inherently pagan. They yeah, yeah. just didn't have the name to it at the time. And I was yeah. you know, raised in Christianity. So we called it something else. But uh, the the grounding video, you know, like I've within like the last year or so. Yeah, almost the last year. Like I've had an awakening you know you talk about like yeah psychedelic psychedelic psychoactive experiences things that that really kind of whoa profound yeah and 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 one of the things for me has been a a a reconnection to nature animism yeah yeah, yeah. um, as it were and you were talking in that video um you're welcome to expound on anything that i may have missed out um grounding and you and you and i keyed in on a very specific thing you talked about getting your bare feet into the earth and into the ground. That's huge. That's huge. We are magnetic creatures. We're literally just a bunch of electrons. So the thing is when we ground ourselves to the earth, it's like plugging your battery in mm-hmm. the earth energy source, you know? So the thing is when you walk barefoot into the dirt over grass or even in water, that's why people, when people are like, Oh, I just feel connected to the water. Well, it's because it's the only time where you're actually in, you know, most people don't take their shoes off and go into the dirt. But it's like when you're in water or the ocean, you know, I'm not just saying pools, but when you're in the ocean, you, you, you just feel there, present, grounded, centered, you know? Rivers, yeah. streams, lakes, yep. rivers, the sea, whatever. Waterfalls. I, mm-hmm. I got a waterfall a while back. That was great. That was awesome. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I post regular content on like the YouTube shorts and stuff and then and, and Facebook reels. Um, if you, follow but like um, i'm i'm in the, so where i live in tennessee um 
Murfreesboro, Middle Tennessee, it's it's Civil War land. You know what I mean? Like there there was there's all kinds of Civil War history here. Um, but if you Google or research Stones River, um, oh. the Stone Stones River is is essentially in my backyard, and so I go to the river or I go on on walks almost every day of the week. Um, and, and it's always barefoot, you know, and, uh, I, I, I advocate it, man. It's like, I don't care if you can't go on a, on a walk for miles or, or feet, like just get outside, touch, touch earth. Yep. Even if you're yep. in the city, you can, you can find a park, you can find something that has soil Often. ground, Often. your, right. Our, our, our earth mother, you know, the, the. Thor's mother, you know, Fjordian, the, the, everything that, that you can find in the lore, even if you want to just lean more towards like the Germanic Norse mythologies, she's around us. She is a part of us and we are a part of her. And so if you are having a bad day, and this is one of the things I've said, if you're having, if you're, if you're, if you're having a bad day, things suck, right? Life sucks. If you take your shoes off and you get your feet anchored, connected and grounded back into the earth for just 10, 15, 20 minutes. I guarantee, and I would almost bet my next paycheck on this, you will feel leagues better. Oh, yeah. Well, the thing, and then the Germanic, Germanic police systems, oak and ash tree, you know? Mm-hmm. So from there, or even if you're a Christian watching this, at uh, dust or dirt, are those not centered in the earth? Mm-hmm. You know, regardless of what you believe, uh, we're, we're part of this. We're part of this earth. So when you, you ground yourself barefoot or whatever you want to do, I mean, some people are like to roll in the dirt. Cool. Good for them. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like, once you're sent, once you do that, you're, uh, it's just such a great, I do it every morning. I wake up cold shower outside grounding. And then, uh, I have my little morning routine that I do. And then I start work and I'll ground myself in the middle of the day too, just because my mind runs a thousand miles a minute. So <laughs> Well, I bet now, especially with, you know, cause, cause what, like as, as a content creator, as an influencer on social media, that is it, that, is that your full-time gig? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm full-time on social media. I run the brand that's too, you know, and then, yeah. uh, so then when you're, when you're online, right. And when you're in such this, and this is kind of one of the things I wanted to come back to earlier. I said, we'll come back to like the analytics and quality versus quantity. It's such an artificial field to play in. It's so like you can be anything you want Literally. online. You can be anybody. You can be as genuine or as fake as you want. And whatever people see is what they're going to perceive you as. Exactly. It's a exactly. part of ourselves. It's a part of yourself. And I feel like as, as social media, you know, content creators, influencers, whatever, do you think, I guess I should say, I don't want to put words into your mouth, but do you think that there's a sense of obligation that we have? As pagans on social media, do you think that we have a level of obligation to be genuine and not just try to push qu- push quantity over quality for likes, oh, follows? Yeah, one hundred percent. I I think that uh, authenticity, realness, and quality is is way more important. Again, I started the whole thing with four or five videos a day you know, just trying to get numbers up. And I, we all do that at, at some point. And, sure. and starting up your page, I this is what I always tell people, okay? And this sounds harsh. In the beginning, when you first start your social media, nobody cares who you are. Mm-hmm. So create stuff that people will like watching until they're curious, who's the person making these videos? What are you like? You know, and then eventually you can move into like, all right, here's about me or here's about what I want to start teaching or about what I want to start creating content about. Uh, that's more like quality. But in the beginning, when you first step on social media, no, nobody knows you. Nobody, I, I hate to say, again, I mean this, but nobody cares until yeah. you create something for them to care about, you know? Yeah. And, and yeah. Small so, fish in a big pond. Or, I mean, you know, like it, it's, it's such a saturated area. You know, like new accounts are created every day. It's the biggest social media, uh, talking about TikTok specifically. It's the biggest social media platform out there at the moment. So mm. it's like you just need to be consistent first, consistency and quality. I mean, uh, quantity in the beginning, and then you'll learn quality. You'll learn quality. Don't try to hop in right away. TikTok doesn't like quality right off the bat. It's the weirdest thing. 
I have a few other pages that I experiment with the algorithm with. Uh, I don't tell people about it. But um, when I, whenever I do those experiments, and it changes every couple months. But uh, we definitely oh, have Higgins, yeah. I think, on social media platform. It's, it's a really fast-growing community. On, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, it's had a huge boom these last couple of years. Like when I popped in on TikTok, the pagan community was just starting. Mm-hmm. And uh, fortunately, I was able to kind of be one of the first ones to hop in and start really being open about it. And uh, now people are opening up more and it's getting way bigger and people are becoming very interested. And uh, I think it's, it's a huge, it's very important for people to know what it really is because the thing is there are some stigmas about it but i haven't experienced those personally in in my real life or even on my social media platform i don't really get a lot of hate and a lot of that drama stuff because that's kind of i kind of try to repel that as much as possible you know that's interesting that you mentioned it because i was going to actually ask you um what has been your experience because if you uh, i'm I'm just going to tell you right now dude like if you haven't experienced it yet uh Oh, with, 600, sure. with, with 600 with 600,000 followers on TikTok that's surprising um but otherwise like just give it time right yeah. it, it's going to happen it's happened to me and i was and i was going to want to talk with you about that if you had like i use the term like horror stories kind of loosely <laughs> but like any sort of like negative um experiences of the less than savory types um and i'll just come right out and say you know the 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 alt right bigoted, racist, you know, scum of the earth, uh, you know, jerk offs that, that, that tend to leech and attach themselves to this particular brand of paganism, this particular branch of paganism, you know, where you've got these superiority complex, you know, small dick energy folks that run around thinking that they're better than everybody else, just because they have a percentage of bloodlines from Northern Europe. Which is, that's so silly. I mean, I, okay, I've seen it and I get comments every once in a while, but I'm not saying like it's something I should ever struggle with. Mm. Um, up until I hit about 300,000 on TikTok, I would say no, I didn't even, and again, all respect to Christians, but I didn't even get those like, repent, Jesus loves you. I didn't even get those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I get those a lot more now. But the thing is, I always say thank you. You know, like, oh, thank you. Jesus loves me. Appreciate it thanks like no hate <laughs> cool right because i mean you know when when i see stuff like that and they're like they're, they're thinking that it's like a a, a message or they're doing their you know due diligence to try to you know convert or whatever i'm like hey man um i'm already uh polytheistic you know yeah. and i come from a monotheistic background and i'm polytheistic now and so were the at the time during like the viking age when when there was a, a heavy movement to convert the indigenous people from paganism into Christianity, right? They were like, oh, it's just one more God to add to our already vibrant array. Yeah, they're like, no problem. Gods. Yeah. Right, it's no problem. So it's like, oh, Jesus loves me. Cool. That's one more God to, you know, I guess, <laughs> nope. you know, be on my side or whatever. And so that's kind of the way I look at it too. It's like, all right. I, and, you know, uh, my my uh, my background, and I've talked about this openly on my podcast and and the channel and stuff before in other videos is, is my background with, with that whole thing has been kind of a rough go, you know, uh, my side of the family that still remains devoutly Christian is definitely not, uh, in agreement with my decision to abandon those ways. And there's, it's always, you know, conversations in the past have always gravitated towards trying to, uh, you know, show me where I'm wrong and convince me that I'm making a bad decision. And a lot of us, I say us, but a lot of a lot of people are are subject to that kind of scrutiny. Um, and uh, all I've tried to ever do is just approach it with a sense of love and 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 being like, "Look, man, I'm well, not can't... trying to tell you what to do. I just ask for the same thing." Yeah, exactly. You know, it's uh, and I always say I've been, I've been very fortunate. My family is very supportive. <laughs> That's great. Uh, all Christian, uh, but my dad is very curious now about our culture and our belief system and who we are. Who we are. He wants to celebrate Yule with me. You know, uh, we mm-hmm. have this place, Valkyrie Ranch, here in Texas. They celebrate it the old way. Giant bonfire, music, drinks. Everybody shows up and we celebrate Yule together. 
you know, and it's, uh, he really wants to come and just see what it's like and experience it. And my family is very supportive about it. Friends have been very supportive about it. And I grew up in the church, you know, I mean, yeah. so it's like, even all my church friends, you know, they're still my friends. You know, it's not like we get an argument. It's like, I, like I always say it, I've been so fortunate because again, I approach it with love whenever I do have those instances like, Oh man, but don't you believe in God? I'm like, well, I'm, I mean, whatever, you know, I kind of, Oh man, that, I, like, I, I've, I've had that. Um, so I've had like where they, they'll, they'll say, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like, you don't believe in God anymore. I'm like, hold on a second. I never said I didn't believe in God or yeah. you're, you're the, a, an Abrahamic God. I never said I didn't believe in it. All I ever approached it is that I don't adopt the doctrine that your Abrahamic God enforces his followers or their followers to adhere to. Um, if I believe in the existence of my gods, then I surely ex believe in the existence of any other gods, regardless of the culture or pantheon, right? I believe that the Hindu gods exist. I believe that the, you know, Asiatic and, and other um, uh, gods exist of, of, of various cultures. So why wouldn't I uh, accept the existence of said God in what you want to follow or believe? I never said that I didn't believe he existed. I just said that I think his ideas are kind of whack and that the doctrine that it, it, you know, kind of goes along with that don't really align with with me and my, you know, views at the time and, and my views going forward. So that's different. Out of curiosity and on the same topic, but a little bit off, what was the hardest part about going from Christian to pagan? Because I know what mine was, but I'm definitely curious what yours was. Mm, that's a good question. Um, so I think there was, there's, there's layers of difficulty that you have to deal with at different points in time. Sure. I think, I think the initial shock or the initial difficulty was dealing with how my loved ones, my family at the time would react to it. Mm, okay. You know, and it was like, I want to be true to what I feel. And I want to be true to how this is pulling in the, like how I'm the, the direction I'm being pulled in. I want to be true to that. And I want to answer that call, but then I got to deal with this backlash yeah. right you know so that i think that was the most difficult thing because again i was i was facing ostracization being ostracized from the people who wow. raised me who i had every bit of my life tied to in it and 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 facing that possibility and ultimately the the actuality of it facing that but remaining steadfast true. and true to what i felt was right for me I think yeah. that for me was the most initial, initially that's, the most difficult part. That's not easy. Wow. See, I never, I never had, again, like I said, I'm very fortunate. I haven't had that issue, but man, no, my, my, my biggest, my hardest transfer was getting over the fear of hell. That's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> the eternal yeah. damnation, right? What I do now, I'm going to be, be punished for later. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Whew. Yeah. Uh, I'm over it now, but when I first, you know, switched over, I was like, man, but like, do I want to burn forever? And now, now I'm like, That's so what did you, what did you, uh, as a counter question, right? What, what did you, what, what was the moment that gave you that clarity of like, I don't need to worry about that anymore. What was the thing that kind of, uh, eased your mind or, or, or changed your worldview? Cause that is a definite worldview. Yeah, it was very hard. Uh, I guess it would have to be the fact that, I mean, if, if I know, me personally, if I no longer believe in that version of heaven, then that version of hell couldn't exist. You know, in my head, you know, like I needed to get over that uh, because, because when I fully felt like this was true, my pagan path, uh, when I felt connected to the earth, when I started noticing my life changed, when my mental, when my mind shift changed and my life changed and everything started flowing mm. better than I ever had when I was at least me personally, when I, when I was Christian, I, I was struggling all the time, mm. you know, always begging for help, you know, and now it's less begging more like, all right, let's get through this. Let's go, you know? And uh, yeah, man, it's go time. It's, it's the doers. Like if you yeah. want change, be the change. Exactly. Exactly. You know? And, uh, Man, it was just it was just when I fully stepped in. I'd say that was about a year and a half ago. 
because I started my pagan journey about two years ago. That's when I started saying, you know what? I wasn't even comfortable saying I was pagan yet, mm-hmm. but my belief system wasn't Christian anymore. So, you know, I was like, oh, what am I? You know, like I'm going to I'm going to go out on a on a on a very I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb because that's just what I do. And I'm going to say that um, your your um, perception of Christianity, Christian versus pagan, right? That whole thing. Um, it that wasn't it, it wasn't such a on and off sort of thing. Matter of fact, yeah. I think turn. there are still times <laughs> and, I, and, and you don't have to say right, wrong or indifferent, but at least for me, like there are still times where you have shadows of questioning and shadows of maybe doubt doubt may be a harsh word there there, there's there's going to be echoes yeah memories of of past because you were brought up in it man like you can't just like you can't just turn that shit off overnight i couldn't and i was born and raised in that for 20 some odd years it took it i was again like i said i was very fortunate because my dad was very adamant about me finding my own path Mm. well that's good he he said find something and run with it but he says while you're in my house we go to church together you know and it's like yeah i did that and you know i was part of the church yeah. i went to- and uh but after i grew up and like i left the house and i started living my own life i was like man i never wanted to do those things for myself mm-hmm. i felt like i had to do those things mm. so, uh, Obligatory. i guess sorry yeah, yeah, you know, and it wasn't like I felt bad doing it. Me and my dad have a really strong connection. You know, I love my dad with all my heart, and you know, me and him are very close. But it's just like I did that because he was really trying to get into his spiritual path. Because you know, he he's he's always struggled with his health, so he never knew when he was going to be gone. So he just wanted to be ready, mm. you know. And I respected that, and that that you know, it's emotional for me. But yeah. outside, it wasn't really who I was my morals weren't even fully Christian you know like they were very much what I'm noticing now you know pain you know it's just the earth I always felt a connection to the earth you know but that was an idol when I was in my Christian path you know I was told right. excuse me the earth doesn't hold any particular power and I was like okay you know just you're right you know, and yeah, that's weird too, right? Because even in Christian doctrine, there it talks about from the dust you came and from the dust you shall return. Yeah, yeah. But don't that's worship right. it. Yeah, okay. right. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I'm a jealous God. You know, yeah, I, yeah. you know, and again, because it it's you know not not to bash the you know different <laughs> denominations, but it's just almost like, but that's why it didn't make sense to me, and that's why I was like, let's let's I'm, I need to move away from this because I'm I, I I'm getting mixed signals here yeah you know the question before i personally i don't find myself questioning myself anymore um and sometimes and i go i even ask myself i say do i believe in hell no but and literally i I wait for myself to feel something i I listen to my body a lot Mm. you know and and when i say when i used to say that i used to tense up a little bit i used to be a little scared you know, like, oh, maybe, maybe, you know, you know, now it's not, no, you know, do, it's, do you think that it has to do with just as humans, right? Just as our, uh, we, we, we don't have any clear understanding of what happens in the afterlife. Do you think nope. that feelings yeah. like that, that apprehension, that oh. doubt, whatever exists because of our constant desire to like, figure out what happens when we die uh sorry uh yes yes i truly think that is exactly it we, we're just full of questions <laughs> yeah uh, fact is like none of us at least this is my perspective none of us really know we can feel like we truly know we can feel like we feel like we know but the thing is do we you know? or, or or we adopt enough of a belief that gives us satisfaction to be like, I don't know, but I'm comfortable with not knowing. And what I do know eases my mind and I can sleep at night. And it doesn't give me such crippling anxiety that it, it keeps me awake and, and yeah. makes me because live in fear. Me personally, I feel like I have no fear of the judgment that I used to be a fear, uh, afraid of. Um, 
now I'm like, worst case scenario, I'm reborn. You, you know what I mean? Like, that's mm. kind of how I feel. And it's like, it's really nothing to care. Or it's just a, uh, the next level of our consciousness. We, we die and we go to the next part, you know, whatever it might be. And it's like, man, if anything, yeah. kind of cool, <laughs> you know? Like, right. Yeah. Oh, man, I get to, I get to, it's like, this isn't even my final form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going super sane now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's so much of what I feel like the, uh, and I, I guess, you know, in any culture, in any religious views, any 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 sort of spirituality, um, you can go down so many rabbit holes with the thoughts of life after death and what that actually means. The really fun thing that I got into with this particular branch of paganism, Norse paganism, is the, the soul complex. It's not just, you know, the version of me that you're talking to right now is just one aspect of my soul the version of me that my tribe speaks to is a different version the version yep. of me that my wife encounters is a different version it's all part of me you know what i mean it's all part of me as a soul there's there's various elements and there's er various aspects of the soul complex and we are eternal beings yes oh yeah you know uh, what i mean like we're not just gonna just that. rot and die into the ground and that's it this meat suit will you know what i mean like that all everything that 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 my visage and my likeness is is gonna eventually rot and die and go away but i will never go away well, and it, that's it, when you get to that point when you realize that when you when yeah. you hit a point in your life where you think and, and and actually believe that i'm never going anywhere that's something Exactly. Because the thing is, too, uh, my perspective is that our body is a car. It's like, if you think about it, literally, our spirit is driving this through the world. Mm -hmm. you know, soul, whatever, spirit. Um, so the thing is, like, we take care of it, change the tires, you know, give it get good gas, you know, do some body work, you know, whatever. Getting a few um, wrecks along the way, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> but to think that your spirit or soul or who you really are, your essence, your energy is judged off 80 years of a vehicle's drive you know i, I really it's pretty shallow it's limiting I, yeah very limiting the the thing is our if we're eternal which i feel we are i feel again i feel it's true for me we're we are eternal which means there's there's other levels to this human experience is just one of them mm -hmm. you know what's next well why do you have memories of things that you've never done before exactly yeah yeah people call yeah. it deja vu whatever you know mm -hmm. why do we feel like we've been places or done things why are we good at things that we've never literally physically done in our conscious life suddenly you know how to do it yeah so mm -hmm. we're just it could be a, a fact of like you know how people say old souls mm -hmm. you know I, I believe truly that a soul goes through until it reaches a certain level of consciousness it's, it realizes what it is and then then it can ascend you know for lack of a better word you know, so we, we can have those multiple lives. And I don't believe time is linear. No. You know, after this life, you could go back into, say, just for example, the Viking age. You know what I mean? Like, but you'll have the, like a consciousness maturity. Yeah. Where well, I there's in the future, you know, or whatever. Right. And I, and I want to say, and it's been so long since I've done any sort of like content about this, but I remember doing a video one time about like the heathen worldview of death. Yeah. And and where you go life after death. And I remember finding something and I can't cite the source. So I'm a bit reluctant to say, but I remember finding something that that strongly suggested and supported that um, Germanic peoples were um, or at least various tribes in, in the regions had a sense or an understanding of reincarnation. It also supports the overall concept of um orlog or orle the inherited luck that we get it's our ancestors have fed into the well we are feeding into the well because we will one day become ancestors and the the cycle goes on and on and on okay. you know there's enough i think content there's enough there's enough source material out there that that supports what i'm saying that for listening you know for those that are listening and watching and stuff to 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 do your own research on it and that's what i always say you know don't take our word for it don't take my word for it do your own research find it for yourself because that's where the work is 100% you know?
percent. Don't just take somebody's word. You know, go look, go try, go practice. <laughs> you know, that's that's one big thing for me is you can't just say something's not true unless you try it. That yeah. sounds not with everything, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I absolutely. It's it, you know, um, I don't know how old you are, but I mean, have you ever Lavar Burton reading Rainbow? Oh Is yeah. That- Right. Don't, but you don't have to take my word for it. He said it at the end of everything, right? It's, you know, he's over here on, on TV, you know, 30 years ago, whatever it was. And it was, you know, telling us a certain thing. And then as kids, he's always there going, but you don't have to take my word for it. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Don't take our word for it. And we have, like we were talking about earlier, you know, like we're, we're, we have a platform, we have multiple platforms. Some of us do. Yep. We're influencing people. We're giving, we're planting those seeds. We're, we're giving people ideas. And I don't know about you, uh, David, but have you seen um, followers that you have? You have an audience, right? You have people that know your face, that know who you are. Maybe they're coming here now. Maybe they're seeing us together for the first time. But have you had people reach out to you in some form or fashion and go, man, what you said, what you did, what you talked about inspired me to do X, Y, Z or do certain things? Have you ever have you had that sort of response from your community? I, on a daily basis. So uh, I'll get three or five messages a bit about a day. You know, I have, so currently in my message bank, I have maybe 300 messages. <laughs> I, <laughs> I can't reply to anybody like I used to. Uh, I, I can't even like look at them like I used to, but I, I'll get a message to five messages a day of people saying, thank you for what you're saying. Wow. You really led me to a new path or man, I've been curious about this forever. I can't wait to learn more. Yeah. Uh, my discord is specifically built for people who are new or just looking to meet other pagans. And then we also have the path of knowledge server, uh, which is specifically for Norse pagan, Asatru and heathenry, you know, those type of belief systems. And that's where you can go and learn like to practice. You meet people who've been doing it for 50. I have a few people who've been doing it for about 50 years in there that are educators. Wow. And nice. um, this is where you come. You can even learn the languages. We have Icelandic, mm-hmm. region, Swedish, like, you know, we have uh, some old Norse teachings that we can do. I'm not in there. I'm still learning, but I brought educators in there that have been practicing since they were. Yeah. Not like their there. whole lives. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And the thing and is that's tremendous. And I like, I'm still practicing, still learning, still experimenting. They've been doing this their whole life, you know, so they would probably know a little bit better, you know? Than- yeah. And I but, feel like maybe they would probably be the ones to say too, like uh, they're still practicing. It's almost like that's why, like when you when you talk about um, certain uh, doctorate fields, you know, yeah. it's a practice. And I thought, and I always thought that that was a really interesting way of describing it. I've been practicing law. I've been practicing medicine for 30, 40, 50 years, twenty, however long. Yeah, like, damn, point. dude! Like, when are you going to be done practicing? It never ends. Always practice. You're always and a student. Always kid. learning. You know, it's never perfection. Practice yeah. doesn't make perfect. Practice makes improvement. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That's yeah. something I have. No, I like that, you know, because I mean, here coming up on, like I say, you know, uh, seven, seven, yeah, going about seven years. I think I'm entering my seventh year. And it's hard to like, again, pinpoint like timelines of things. But if I were to put a timeline on things, I'm, I'm, I'm in my seventh year of uh, being a practicing pagan. And um, I was talking to a guy who I uh, have am friends with and have been friends with for years. And um, when I first started, you know, he was a decade or more into his practices and and I was new and he's been kind of following along with me and, and uh, that's cool. That's being awesome. there as, as like, not like a, like directly tied, but just like a witness and kind of seeing, he's like, man, I remember having him on this podcast, like I think it was earlier this season or maybe last season. I have to look back at my catalog to see if it was season two or three, but I had him on the podcast and he's like, dude, you're kind of getting to that point now where you're the teacher, that you're getting into that realm of being a source that people look to as reliability. And that carries with it a huge responsibility. You know, you can't just be like, I read a book or two and, and I know what I know. And that's, you know, I think what a lot of uh, content creators that are pagan get into a trap of is I, I read the Havamal once, or I read the Poetic Edda, or I read this book, and now all of a sudden I'm an expert on the subject. It's yeah. such a problem to, like, 
just because you read the book, just because you had a ritual, just because you, you know, bought your first rune set and you read a book by, you know, Edra Thorson or whoever, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like you're not the expert and you have no business being that voice in the community. Not to say that you can't someday be, but just at least if you're going to be a voice, like, preface it by saying like hey guys i'm on my journey i'm learning and, and share the knowledge it's it's don't try to position yourself as a leading part of it and i never did like i've never been like the one like hey guys listen to me matter of fact yeah. i've always said in my videos is like kind of like the whole of our burton thing don't take my word for it but here's where i'm at here's what i've found now find it for yourself that's what that's what i that's exactly what i do so so if you look at my page you'll see a lot of very there's, there's a lot of informational posts about paganism, but they're, if you watch them, they're very basic because what I can do is I can help people start because I've started uh, and I have my practices and what, what helped me get into it. Mm -hmm. Why? But um, <laughs> I can't teach you like, you know, the, the next levels, you know, I can't teach you what I haven't learned, you mm -hmm. know, I'm still I'm still figuring it all out. And that's why I have the discord set up and yeah. in my videos, wherever, where, uh, whenever I'm educating, you'll, you'll see that I'll be like, Hey, but for more information for deeper knowledge or for better community, refer to my discord because I have real educators on there who have been doing it. Me, I'm still learning. I'm still practicing. We're all still practicing, but it's just like, I'm new. Yeah. I'm so I'm going to teach you what has worked for me so far. You know, and, and then I, I do go to counsel, not, not counseling, but I counsel with people who are knowledgeable and I ask them, I'm like, oh man, what, what would be a good next step? What should I start looking into? Uh, what should I start learning? You know, my, my big focus at the moment is, is uh, runes. I, I really want to understand mm. their, their powers, you know, their, their, their strength, you know, what they mean. Uh, I made my own rune set, you know, cause I heard that gives you a little bit of a better connection to them and. You know, I just want to practice. I, I want to go all in into it so that I can tell people this works, this doesn't. This works, this like for me. You know, like I tried that personally, it didn't work for me, but you can try it if you want. You know, or I tried this and it worked and I felt this. I encourage you, try it. You know, and that that's kind of how I like to teach. That's how I like to educate people on my path. Yeah, the runes are are, I mean, and we could go. We could, we could, we could go on a whole episode of, of, of just that I've, I've gotten oh, into the, I've gotten into rune studies and I'm still a student of the runes and have been, and it was, it was by, it, I wouldn't say it was by accident, but it was, it was not of, of any sort of like conscious effort. Like I didn't wake up one day. Well, let me take that back. <laughs> I was woken up one day. Uh, and, and, and given the, the runology the, the, the study of runes to become vitki right like that was that was something that was i was literally woken up from a deep sleep to do that it wasn't anything that i just consciously said oh it's a tuesday i better start and i've been a pagan for a year or two years however long i better start learning the runes wasn't like that um and that's what i've always told people is like you don't you don't need that to be a good pagan right like quote unquote you don't need that to be a a a, a, a good practicing heathen like that's kind of it's almost like when, you know, if you want your house built, you're going to go to a carpenter. If you want your plumbing done right, you're going to go to a plumber. You're going to go to the specialist that knows the thing about whatever it is to do. Yep. And if that's not you and you're not ready to learn it, then there's no reason that you, you should feel obligated to learn it. Exactly. If you're inspired and pushed to want to do it or if it's been given to you in some sort of way to uh, to pursue it, then by all means, uh, definitely dive in. And that's kind of where I fell in it. It was that, you know, I didn't decide it for myself it was it was literally a crack like a lightning bolt that just said time for you to go that route so, that's okay cool. that's know? cool but yeah um man I, I feel like we could probably go on forever on this and and with consideration of time and the listeners and viewers and stuff i'm i'm, I'm probably going to tie this off right here right now uh if that's cool with you because uh there's a lot to digest just from this episode. Like we touched on a lot of different things. I think a lot of people that are maybe interested in considering being a, a content creator or an influencer on social media in the vein of paganism have some things to really think about. Yeah, thanks yeah. To your insight and thanks to you. Obviously, you you have some experience because you went from you know a day 
de- a day job essentially to being a full-time content creator. Yeah. And, and that's my goal is just to teach people what I, what I've done so far. I'm still learning a lot, but I, I want people to be able to live their dreams, you know, and I can honestly say since I've hopped in the pagan path, my dreams have started coming true constantly and it's, it's crazy. You know, so it's totally, yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was just going to say it's totally possible for anybody, anytime. Just the only limit is you. And we know that, <laughs> you know, and especially in the pagan path, you know, just don't get in your own way. Keep mm. moving forward and let it guide you. That's the cool part. Yeah, man. Be inspired and, and do what's, what's, what's good for you. So um, I definitely appreciate your willingness to come on here and talk for as long as we did um yeah, hang out for yeah definitely hang out for a bit um when i when i sign everybody off here so we can talk a little bit but uh for everybody that is still here and and, and listening watching whatever the links for david uh his his channel his his tiktok instagram it's going to be annotated in the show notes of the podcast and it's going to be down in the description of this video so please be sure to give him a follow like subscribe whatever the platform is that calls for you to show your support of him Appreciate definitely that. do so yeah um so anything else david before i sign everybody off is there any parting words that you want to leave for the listeners and viewers today so yeah there, there's something specifically i say uh i try to say it every day to my audience to everybody that's around is uh, i just want to remind you if nobody has said it to you in a while or nobody has said it out loud you are worthy you are enough and you are loved no matter what anybody says. And um, I want you to, uh, I want anybody who's here, if you go away with anything, just go away knowing those three things, please. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And that's, and that's what we all need to hear. You know, don't, don't, don't let the naysayers discourage you from following what you feel is right. 100%. Cool. <laughs> so for everybody here, thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to check the description show notes uh, for the, all the ways that you can support this podcast and Midgard Musings as a whole, the link, the link tree link is always down there for you to check out. So definitely do so. And until we talk again, may the gods continue to notice you and may your ancestors smile upon you. Love it. That's awesome. <laughs>